Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is a special broadcast I'm doing for the year ahead. So what are we to expect in 2016? I know you've probably been hearing a few astrologers already talking about the year ahead, but I want to touch on a few sensitive points during this year. You can get a pen and paper and write down dates if you want. And before we start, I want to acknowledge my teacher, Maurice Fernandez, who I draw a lot of inspiration and advice from, and some of the things I'm going to say here today are things I've heard him say. So, let's begin. First of all, during the last couple of years, we had a lot of cardinal energy in the sky. The cardinal energy is about changing season. It's about getting from point A to point B. It's about allowing us to change in order to fit better with the changing time and to act in accordance with the development that is necessary for us as individuals and as a society. But that cardinal energy has been uh, transmuted into mutable energies in the skies during the last couple of months and it's going to stay with us during 216 and 217 and then we're going to go back to cardinal energy in 218 with Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. But what is mutable energy? Well, mutable energy is about allowing us to disseminate the message of change and to digest the needed change on an emotional and spiritual level. So, these are key words for the next year. Digestion, emotional reaction, and dissemination of the message. Everything becomes global, both positive and negative. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, Saturn and Sagittarius, first of all. And what does that mean? Well, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. It is the judge. And when it enters the sign of Sagittarius that is in charge of our belief systems, of our philosophies, of the truth we hold dear and the light that we candle, then we can see a lot of harshness regarding our belief systems. It's a time of testing to everything we believe in. It's a time in which we all, as individuals, ask ourselves, what do we believe in? What is our truth? And are we walking according to the light that we hold sacred? Or are we hypocrites? And this is an individual question, and this is a social question, and this is a global question. So we could see a lot of people that are being exposed for being hypocrites. Saturn is not forgiving. And if you preach a different gospel than the one you walk, you will be exposed. These are the laws of karma when Saturn is in Sagittarius. So that's both on an individual and on a social level. But other than that, we could see people being more... Um, sure of themselves and sure that they have the truth of the matter and that their truth is the only truth. When Saturn is in Sagittarius, about every 29 and a half years, we could see religious wars heightening and conflicts in this world are changing from conflicts on land, on resources, to conflicts on belief systems on how we should and should not behave in human society. Since this is mutable energy, everything is global. So even the conflicts can be and will be global. Really, in this world we find, in this time, we find that in this world there are only two groups of people. And we can find those two groups of people in any society, in any religion, in any country, and most times in any family. One group of people believe that we are all born as human beings on a round world and understand that we need 
to learn how to get, to get along with each other. That everybody has equal rights and it's a live and let live environment that we should pamper and cultivate. And that none of us have uh, ownership over the truth. And that the truth is not um, complete with any of us. And that it is a process of learning and evolving. The other group believes that their truth is the only truth. And that everybody around them should live according to that truth. So these are the two groups of people we can see in the world today. And we could see the struggle between these two groups heightening. Making us understand better what is right and what is wrong. What is acceptable in our human schoolyard and what is not. So that's Saturn and Sagittarius for you. The second thing I want to speak about is the Mars retrograde. Mars is going to start its retrograde, a cycle that happens every two and a half years, approximately, on April 17th at 08 Sagittarius. It's happening close to the Royal Star of Antares. Mars is going to finish its retrograde on June 23rd, I'm sorry, on June 30th, on the 23rd degree of Scorpio. Now, what does Mars retrograde mean? Maurice often says that when Mars starts moving direct again after retrograde, it's like a catapult of energy that throws us ahead that catapults us really forward in our lives into new associations, new attachments, and new action in our life. But oftentimes, the time of the Mars retrograde on an individual level is a time that we reinvent ourselves. It's a time in which all our attachments are tested and sometimes changed. So we could see uh, during those months a change in our relationships, a change in our work environment, a change in our house. Anything we are attached to is subject to change. And in a sense, this is a time in which we rethink anything that is concerned with action in our life, with uh, being proactive with our wants, our needs, our desires, and because of that, our targets and our goals. Now, on a global level, on a national level, this is a time that for many countries, and especially for Israel, has been a time of war, a time of aggression, especially when Mars exits the retrograde. So we could anticipate that there would be some aggression during June next year regarding Israel and we'll be talking about it a little more very soon. I want to mention the Saturn retrograde that's going to take place between Mars, March 26 at 16 Sagittarius to August 14 at 9 Sagittarius. Again, 9 Sagittarius, a very active degree this year. This is the same degree that Mars and Saturn are going to conjunct at, at uh, 09 Sagittarius at August 12. So if you have planets in your personal chart around those degrees in Sagittarius or just across in uh, Gemini, in the beginning of Gemini, you would be more activated by these transits. If you have a lot of mutable energy in your chart, you would be more activated by these transits. We would go over a list of activated degrees at the end of the video, just for your convenience. So, 
I don't want to elaborate too much about the Saturn retrograde, but again, since it says Saturn in Sagittarius, it's a time that we rethink our philosophies. It's a time that we reevaluate everything we believe in and hold dear, and our truth regarding our lives and what is right and what is wrong. But when it leaves that retrograde, again, we could see a forward movement and a lot more harshness and rigidness regarding what we believe as a, you know, something that's being melted and recasted and then cools down and hardens. Now let's talk a bit about that Mars retrograde in Israel because it's an interesting subject. So first of all, Mars enters the retrograde in the second house of the state of Israel in front of Ceres. And so would be with the Saturn-Mars conjunction later on that year. It would go out of retrograde, that Mars, over the Quran of the state of Israel in front of Israel's natal sun and square its natal Mars. Again, this talks about the significance of that Mars retrograde to the state of Israel. And we can anticipate that during the Mars retrograde, Israel could be in an uncomfortable position, thinking of how it should react. But once that Mars retrograde is over, most probably Israel would react. And we can anticipate that a military uh, influence, a, a, a militaristic influence, would be involved, especially with the conjunction of Mars and Saturn a bit later on in August 12. Let's talk a bit about that Mars retrograde and the Islamic State. Well, Mars enters that retrograde in front of Isis's Venus, natal Venus, which means to me, and it's square to the natal Neptune of Isis, that means to me that during the beginning of the retrograde, Isis could lose ground could suffer heavy losses, could experience severe action against them. But as this Mars retrograde goes on, and especially when Mars goes out of retrograde, we see that Isis is not in a bad state as we could have anticipated from international action against them. So we could see that they have lessened in power, that they lost ground, but they're certainly not done with. And that would take a longer time than was anticipated. Let's talk about Mars and the United States. Well, Mars enters its retrograde on the ascendant of the United States that, as you know, or maybe you don't, is on 08 Sagittarius, really speaking about the importance of that Mars retrograde for the United States as well. So we can anticipate being in the first house and then in the 12th house, I'm sorry, being in the first house, then back to the 12th house of the United States and then back to the fourth, four, to the first, <laughs> sorry, um, that the United States could think about heightening and, and, and really enlarging its role in the international fight against terrorism and against ISIS and against other radical Islamic groups in particular. We can see that this is a special time for the United States, the year ahead, as on the 4th of July, the birthday of the state of the United States, we can see a new moon on the natal sun of the United States, really signifying that these are crucial and critical years for the United States and that the action of the United States during the next year and a half or so would really give birth to whatever happens later on. So any action is really impl has, impl impl has implications for the coming years. Mars leaves its retrograde on the 12th house 
of the United States squaring its moon when Pluto in the sky is in front of the United States natal sun. Again, this is an uncomfortable time for the United States. We're talking about June 23rd. I'm sorry, about June 30th. This is a time in which the United States could feel that it needs a change, that it, it is threatened, threatened in some way, that maybe some of its endeavors have not been going as well as, expect, as it has been expected. It's a time that requires change. What else can we talk about? The mutable cross in the skies, of course. So, the mutable cross is going to lock in place on June 4th at 14 degrees um, Gemini with Venus and Neptune in Pisces and Chiron in Pisces on the south node in front or opposing Jupiter in Virgo on the, on the north node squaring Saturn in Sagittarius creating a T-square that we would feel until August and of course on, um, on the 4th of June the Moon and Venus are going to stand uh, completing it to, in, into a cross. So we have the Venus Moon Sun on the one hand, then we have Neptune Chiron on another corner, then we have Jupiter on, on another corner and we have Saturn on the last corner. And as I said, the Moon and the Sun and Venus are going to move pretty fast away, but we're still going to feel that T-square that's going to be there until August and even afterwards. There's a lot of T-squares in the sky, like a T-square between Pluto and Mars and Uranus Mercury in October, and another T-square between Pluto, Uranus and Jupiter in November. That would take us into 216. And now what is the T-square energy what is the cross energy all about, especially immutable signs? So again, it heightens the mutable energy. And it's about expanding and collapsing back. And expanding again and collapsing back. It's about trying to make that next step in your life on an individual level, or the change that is needed, needed on a social or global or national level. And trying many new things some of them not working as expected, being delayed, being postponed, being cancelled. And then again, entering a state of consolidation, of uh, maturation, of um, digestion on an emotional and spiritual level, of dissemination of the message. And then again, stepping that step forward, but being more mature about it and, and acting in a way that is better and more attuned to who we are and what we are. And so, really establishing and, and, and um, solidifying the change that needs to happen. And the T-square energy is a lot about struggles. It's a lot about acknowledging that there are parts in our lives that are uncomfortable and that require change and that we need to acknowledge them and touch that pain and enter that struggle bravely in order for them to change before it would be more painful if we don't do anything and we just continue with our own ways. So, that's about it, what I wanted to talk to you about 2.16. I want to thank you for listening and I invite you to listen to my daily forecasts and be in touch whether it's on Profiler Astrology on Facebook or BoazFiler.com, my site. And of course, you can always write me on BoazFiler at gmail.com and I'm here for you. Thank you again and have a beautiful 2.16. Bye-bye.